2020, here we come. 2020 is going to be a great year for marketing because there is, I mean, the economy is growing and regulations are falling and there's a lot of opportunity. People are more so than ever moving online. They just continue moving online. Internet usage continues to spike and with the advent of the Internet of Things, now your refrigerator, your lights, your security devices, your entire home, your car is connected to the internet. People in third world countries are getting phones, getting smartphones, using more internet. It's on a wild ride and it continues to go up with no sign of coming down anytime soon. 2020 for sure is gonna be the best year yet if you're running some sort of internet business. Now, if you're doing digital marketing in 2020, you have a lot to look forward to. But there's also a lot of trends that you should be aware of that are coming up. Now, making good use of these trends and being ahead of the curve rather than falling behind the curve is going to help you in your business. Whether you're doing, you know, affiliate marketing, e-commerce, you're running a small business, whatever you're doing, being ahead of the curve is going to help you to compete in just a competitive space because as much as more people are using the internet, more businesses are getting smart about how to do digital marketing. And I'm going to be going over six different tips or six different big trends that are happening this year that I'm aware of and doing things to implement in my business. And I'll show you how you can take advantage of these trends for your business as well. So let's get into it. Let's make some money in 2020 and take note on all of these trends. So the first big trend is the omni-channel approach. What does that even mean, right? An omni-channel approach means that if you're just relying on one marketing channel to drive your entire business, you should definitely start be looking into having more channels of marketing and having them all feed off of each other. Now, my main social channel is YouTube, but I take YouTube and I repost that content on other social channels as well. I have followings on other social channels. I have them feed into my email list. I have my email list feed into my YouTube channel or my Instagram or my Facebook group. I ferry people around between all of my marketing channels. Maybe, you know, YouTube, Facebook, you have a Facebook group and you want to be leveraging all of these different channels and having them work in tandem. Now, an example of how I do this in my business is when people subscribe to my email list, I immediately ask them to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And when they subscribe to my YouTube channel, I ask people to join my Facebook group. When people join my Facebook group, I ask them to join my Instagram. And I offer different incentives along the way. Maybe it's an ebook, maybe it's a case study, maybe it's a video, maybe it's a training playlist. By the way, I have a really good video training on how to be an entrepreneur. So check out, it's an interview series I did with a a business owner named Drew Canoli who does about $50 million a year in his business. How do you become an entrepreneur? How do you get started? And if you're just looking to get started as an entrepreneur, then check out this playlist. I'll have my assistants link to it. Moving people around is important. Make use of it. It's simple. It's free to set up all these different kind of social profiles and have them all link around to each other. The more you can use that, the more you build an asset for yourself and the more you decrease reliance on any one particular marketing platform. For instance, Facebook groups are being promoted heavily by Facebook. They, that would be a really good thing to have this year. If you had been building your Facebook group in 2018 or 2019, that would be much more worthwhile moving into 2020. Similarly, if Google changes their algorithm for whatever reason, you know, they just, I don't know, they sneeze and they're like, oh, we're going to change our algorithm. It would be beneficial to you and it would keep your business more stable if you had other channels such as YouTube or Instagram, etc., to reach consumers on. At the end of the day, reliance on any one marketing channel is very dangerous. Let's say Facebook is where you make the bulk of your sales. It doesn't hurt to help build some of those other channels just in case. Ooh, this is a sexy one and something people aren't really talking about is voice search, okay? Voice search is surging. I think uh, roughly 45% of Americans use voice search now, whether it's just you know ordering something in your phone when you're driving or whether it's you can actually talk some of the new cars that are coming out you can talk to. Some of the new refrigerators and the microwaves are coming out so you can actually talk to them. You can talk to your security device. We have four Google Home Assistants in my household that 
we are talking to constantly. Hey Google, what's the weather like today? Hey Google, what time does Best Buy open? Hey Google, what are some good daycares around our area? No matter what, voice search is taking over. It's moving way up, it's growing very fast, and with the advent of all these virtual assistants, it's just gonna continue to grow. These virtual assistants are super cheap. They're like 20 bucks now. So you really wanna make use of that. Alexa, you know, Amazon has their own Alexa. But voice search, one trend to understand is you want to make sure you're ranking for keywords that people speak. And oftentimes people speak really long tail phrases. They'll say, are there any restaurants open in you know, Malibu right now that serve Chinese food? That's a really long search, right? But that's the type of stuff that people are searching for now. So search trends are changing because of voice search. So you have to keep that in mind for whatever you're doing to rank whatever sites you are, if you're doing SEO type stuff or whatnot. Now, CRO stands for conversion rate optimization. John, that sounds like a really boring technical long term that I'll never be able to put in my brain. No, if you're not doing conversion rate optimization, you're not a real marketer, I'm sorry, but you can do this very easily. The tool I suggest you do this with is uh, ClickFunnels. So I have link to sign up for ClickFunnels in the descriptions of this video, ClickFunnels allows you to split test your web pages. If you can make little changes where people will register for your email list more, or join your Facebook group more, or join your YouTube channel, whatever you're trying to do, you can test out test out different messages. Test out one video here and one video on this page. You know, test out a picture of a you know, a woman on, you know, one page and test it against an image of a man and see what people react to more. See what gets people increasing your opt-in rates and your conversion rates, whatever product you're trying to sell, your click-through rates if you're doing affiliate marketing. Conversion rate optimization is necessary to stay competitive. There's so many businesses coming into, you know, the field that if you're not doing conversion rate optimization, somebody else is and they're learning every single week based on their traffic and they're going to outcompete you. They're just going to get more people opting into their email list, they're gonna monetize better, and they're gonna end up just making more money from their customers and getting more people into their uh, marketing funnel. Now, with that being said, funnels are, a, you know, just continue to be a really big deal and creating longer marketing funnels for your business is gonna help you out a lot. Now, an example of this is if you're a tree trimmer, you know, what people used to do in the olden days is they would just list their tree trimming service in Google and they just say, oh, I'm a tree trimmer, here's how to contact me, here's the areas I serve. What would be more beneficial is if you actually had, you know, like lead people through a process, have people fill out a form, an application form, give them more information on trees, have them subscribe to your email list and give them a free report on the best methods or how often to trim trees. That would increase business. If you're telling people you should be trimming your trees every three months and maybe you are trimming your trees every year, you know, that would help. You know, have a case study on how, why people should be using your business more. Having reports, having an email list. And again, part of that omni-channel approach, moving people from you know, let's say your email list to your Facebook group to your Instagram profile to your LinkedIn or whatever you're using will help you ferry people, build that marketing funnel and just be able to reach people many ways and give them more information. Now one thing I did in my business which really took it to the next level is when I started back in 2015, I, was, uh, I started my, my own product. I started selling this product called the Super Affiliate System which is a six week training course on how to do affiliate marketing. And I would, I had a training course, it was $5,000. And what I did was I simply had a application form and then I had a payment page, okay? So where people could pay me money. What ended up working a lot better than this is I started making it longer because I, I was getting a lot of traffic, but people had so many questions. So I had to make my funnel longer and this ended up getting me a lot more customers. So I ended up having a short opt-in page, which explained the basics of what we offered. Then I moved it to a application, and then I moved it so that people could pay me. Pretty simple, right? So I added in an opt-in page so that I could give people a little taste of what it is that you know, I'm doing. You know, it would be a little preview video. There'd be a little video there that would explain to people what it is that they are going to fill out an application for because most people were not just filling out a bunch of fields on an application to give me money. I would require people to fill out about 
20 feet or 15 fields of information before they could give me money because I wanted to know if they were a correct fit for my training program. Having an opt-in also allowed me to do was collect their email. So I was able to send them email reminders that brought them back to my application. Because some people maybe weren't interested in going through my training program that day, but they might be ready in a month from now. And if I kept reminding them, you know, they would want to be a student of mine a month later. This made me more money. Let's say, let's say I made $1 here, I would like double my money here. Now, what makes a lot more sense for somebody to become a student of mine is I created an even longer funnel. So now I have a opt-in page, I have a webinar, which explains to people why, you know, what the business model is of affiliate marketing, why they should do it, how it works, what you're doing each day, how much time it takes, what countries it's good in, can you use a laptop or desktop or a mobile phone or a tablet, what is the work, you know, what are the skills, what are the ways you can get a competitive edge. So I made my funnel a bit longer and then once again, you know, I have the application and I have the page where you can actually join as a student. So this increased my conversion rate even more. And it also lessened the amount of customer support I had to do or sales calls or whatever it was because people would always ask me questions and this way I could answer all those questions. But the side effect is I could also reach a larger market because I'm explaining what my product and service is in a better way. Generally speaking, the more you can explain what your product or service is before somebody buys it, the more money you're gonna make. The longer your funnel is, the more money you generally make. Most people have way too short of a funnel. They don't provide enough information. The more information you can provide people in a congruent manner. The reason we use funnels is because if I were to put all of the information that I explain on the webinar and the application in one web page, it would be a hundred pages long. It would be a book. But instead, I give people different decision points of whether to move forward or not. That's the beauty of it is you're giving people at essential levels different decision points. And if this works better for you, can you, th you can think of it like dating. You're not gonna meet somebody, immediately take them out and go on a date with them, and then go on another date, and then go on another date, and then ask them to marry you. Okay, generally doesn't happen. Maybe there are a few cases where that happens. More likely what happens is you meet somebody, you get their phone number, right, decision point. You talk to them a couple times via text message, then you go on a, you know, a date, and then there's another decision point where you say, okay, we'd like to be in a, an exclusive relationship. Then there's a decision point of you if you get married. So that's normal communication. That's how humans interact. There's different periods where you have to make decision points in any funnel. So the more you can kind of model the normal human experience around product purchase decisions, the better it will be for your customers. Now, a few other trends for 2020, if you're doing digital marketing are, I've listed out a few of them here, but content, content is getting, you know, it's, it's not as effective, you know, using content marketing. I would say it's definitely not as effective moving into 2020 because of what's really overtaking it is video. So to do content marketing, everybody's rehashed content. If you search any subject on Google, so many people have ranked for it. There's so much text on Google now and people ranking, you know, even infographics. You know, if you search affiliate marketing infographics, you'll find like thousands. So you have to, to really stand out if you're doing content marketing, you have to really have something fresh and new that's never been done before. I'm just not too hot on content for 2020, but make it fresh and new. Next thing is chat. So having live chat on your website is a huge benefit. Companies like Intercom are growing. I think Intercom is like a billion dollar company now because chat works. Using live chat to chat with your customers, see what they're doing or their prospects, talk with them live on your website is a great approach to capturing more of those leads. Somebody might have just a little question. If you're a tree trimming service, somebody might just have a little question that wasn't answered on your website and you can fill in the blanks just by chatting with them. They're interested, they're on your website. Why not allow them to ask you a question there live? You know, I've heard some companies increase their conversion rates as much as 35%. That's 35% more revenue, more customers, more ROI, just by implementing chat. So that's a great way to, uh, great thing to do in 2020. Now, the next thing is video. Now, video is, continues to really overtake you know, content 
video is huge. If you're not using video at some degree in your business, whether you're using it in your web pages or your marketing funnels, or you're actually, you know, you have like a YouTube channel like me to reach people, I would start, you know, put videos on your web pages, explain to people what they want to hear. You know, if you have a tree trimming service and you just have a picture of a tree on your web page, simple. Just take your thing and show people, say I'm on site with a client. Here's an explanation of what we do. Generally, I I will, if you're interested, I will talk to you on the phone. I will assess how many trees we have to trim. This house, we have, you know, we have five trees over there. We're gonna trim, they're all above 50 feet. And then we have a couple smaller trees. Those are priced out differently. And it depends on how, you know, I have to quote things based on how easy it is to reach them, how easy it is to climb them, et cetera. And you'll get a lot more business if you're using video. And it also gives people something to relate to. And last but not least is podcasting. Now, tons of people use podcasting and over almost half of the people that listen to podcasts make an income of over $70,000 a year. So you have a very moneyed audience using podcasting. And if you're selling any sort of kind of complicated uh, sales, such as like life insurance or health insurance or another type of financial product, a training product, or really anything, franchisors, et cetera, podcasting is a great way to reach a more affluent audience and podcasting is growing really fast. And people, podcasters are always looking for content and people to interview. So leveraging podcasting, whether you're doing you know, advertising or whether you're just you're just allowing people to interview you about your business is a great way to build an audience and to reach people. Boom, that's about it for the trends for 2020. I'm, I'm trying to use all of these in my business. I spend multiple hours per week doing podcasts with other influencers and very actively making an effort to reach out to people and, and say, hey, look, if you want me to talk and provide some value to your audience about a couple subjects, I'm willing to do that. And if you are a podcaster listening to this, reach out to me. Obviously, I'm using video, we're using chat, and we're not really using content. I've really not been using SEO, but all of these things you can use for your business. Let me know what was the most interesting to you in the comments below. Was it podcasting, video, chat, conversion rate optimization, funnels, voice search, or an omni-channel approach. Let me know in the comments what was most interesting to you, and I will do a future video more specifically on that channel and how you can utilize it for your business. Make sure, as always, like this video if you got value. Subscribe to this channel to see daily videos on marketing and affiliate marketing and how to reach more people. And make sure you join the Money Club if you wanna go a little bit deeper. It's $50 a month and you can get some exclusive courses of mine. You'll get a free coaching call with one of, my, uh, one of the coaches that works with me. And I look forward to speaking with you in the future. Have a good day.